Hello everyone! I'm doing a tutorial for the first time in a very long time and we're looking at Clip Studio Paints animation today sponsored by the lovely people at Celsius who made Clip Studio Paint and I was so jazzed because I absolutely love this program. I recommend it to everyone and I think you've probably heard that from other people already. It's a really good price, it's one-time payment, you don't have to pay monthly like with Adobe software and it has so much stuff, it pretty much covers all the bases you'd need with Photoshop. But anyway, we're gonna look at how to animate with this today. Gonna be doing a short little, little gif loop, so I'm gonna show how we do that. So when you've done file new and you're gonna make a new project here, you usually start off on this use of work under illustration and what we're going to want to do is click animation. You can name your animation here, you can select your preset here and I'd recommend 1920 by 1080 as that's sort of the resolution standard for widescreen. You can also alter that further here. CSP automatically gives you a blank space surrounding your workspace which is really nice. You can even change the size of your blank space here in case you want more space but we're just going to be doing something simple today so we don't really need it. As for the timeline, this is what you're going to be working on so it lets you name your timeline as you can have multiple but we're just going to be working with one today. I'd recommend a frame rate of 24 frames per second. That's just because 24 is the industry standard in America anyway. And if you want a slightly choppier animation or you don't want to use, you know, utilize all of those 24 frames, that's totally fine. You can adjust the kind of length of your frames. So don't worry, we're not going to be drawing 24 frames today. <laughs> Playback time alters how the timeline is labeled. This doesn't change anything about your animation, it just changes how the actual timeline is labelled in your file. We're just going to go frame number starting from 1. You don't have to worry about scene numbers and shot numbers, those are for big projects. And I honestly don't know what division line is, so we'll ignore that. <laughs> so all we have to do now is click OK and it will give us our file right here. This is our timeline down here. Now if you don't have this, click on window and then timeline. Like it might pop out like this. And then what you can do is you can just drag that anywhere you want onto your interface. So I like to have it just down here. I have the pro version, not the X version. So I can only do one second of animation. If you want to do longer animations, you can go for the X version. So we're just going to be doing one second today. You can usually extend that by dragging this, this blue bar around. This shows the end of your animation. So you can make it shorter or longer if you want to. And there you go, it stops, loops like that. On the side here, underneath timeline 1, this is the timeline you have selected, you have your animation folder, which also shows up on your layers menu if you have that open. So what that is, it's similar to Photoshop if you've animated in Photoshop. Every frame that you draw will end up in there. I'm going to quickly switch over to a different file that I played with earlier so that I can show this a bit better. So as you can see, I've got three frames on the timeline here that I just scribbled down. Um, and you can see that they've appeared underneath an animation folder on the time on the oh, layers panel, sorry. So just think of it as a layer. So all of your frames will be contained in this animation folder which represents your layer. So as I showed earlier, these are my three drawings on the timeline. I'm just scrubbing by clicking and dragging on the frame numbers here. I can play by clicking the little play button here and it will play at 24 frames per second. So you can see I don't need to draw on every frame. I can just time things differently and you can also alter the timing by clicking at the beginning of your frame and dragging it around like that. So if we go through the buttons here a little bit. So edit timeline allows for quick scrubbing and flicking between frames. New timeline allows you to make a whole new timeline on here. We're not going to be using that so don't worry about that. Zoom in and zoom out allows you to zoom in and out of your timeline window. You can go to start, so you can go to the start of your animation and there's also a button for go to end. Next to that there's previous frame, so you can jump to your previous frames and there's also a go to next frame. I've set a shortcut for this, which I've set as the comma and the period key, so you can quickly do this. It's quite good to flick between your drawings to see how it moves and this allows for very quick flicking like that. There's also a play button, which is very important. Here you can play the animation to see what it looks like. Very nice. There's the loop play. Loop play allows you to see it over and over again, so you keep that on. New animation folder. This essentially creates a new layer for your animation. So you can see on the layers panel over here, it's made a new folder. So there you can add new drawings. So you can click the button next to it that says new animation cell, and that creates a new drawing. 
So now you can draw whatever, let's change the color to pink or whatever. And now you can see that that's on top of our previous layer. When I added that drawing there, I clicked new animation cell. Now different programs call these different things. Clip Studio calls them cells. What that essentially means is your drawing. I'm used to calling it drawing because I use Toon Boom. So say I've got three drawings on here. Most people are used to calling them frames, which is also fine. But usually the word frame is used for your individual little sections here on your timeline. So, you know, we have 24 frames. That doesn't necessarily mean 24 drawings. We add a new cell in between other cells. We draw more things and then we have more and more drawings. And the more you do that, the smoother it gets, but we don't need smooth. Smooth is for losers. No, it's not, but like we don't need things to be smooth. And if you want to delete a cell, you can click on the beginning of it and then click delete specified cells which is right here. The one next to that is specify cell. Now this one allows you to move or insert a current cell to the frame that you've got selected on the timeline. So say I'm on frame seven right now. If I click on specify cells, this window will come up and it will give me um, my layer names here. So these are my cell names. One A and one B were the two green ones that I just did and I deleted them. So say I want to bring them back because they still exist in the file. They're on the timeline over here. They're just not visible on the timeline. I can bring it back if I want to, so I can click one or I could enter the name of it. If I have like hundreds and hundreds of, of cells, I can just foot search for one here. So say I want one A back and I want it on frame seven. So, okay, and he's back. <laughs> And say I want to alter the timing, oh, I don't actually want it on frame 7, I can just move it to frame 3 or frame 5, like that. I can move this one back to frame 9, stuff like that. If you want to delete it for good, you can go over to the frames here and then just delete 1A and 1B, like that. And now they're gone forever for life, they're dead now. Moving on from that, we have the enable onion skin which enables the onion skin. Now, if you don't want know what onion skin is, it's the name of the tool that allows you to see the frames before and after your current frame. The next set of buttons is to do with tweening. So you can click on this button, enable keyframes on this layer, and that will enable keyframes. And what those are, are these little diamond shapes. I've got some on here already as I was playing with this earlier. And what you can do is you can click the add keyframe button and it'll add one of those diamond shapes onto your timeline. You can click and drag these little diamonds. It creates an automatic tween for you when you make a new keyframe. So let's say, let's add another one here, move it way over there, and now there's a tween where it moves over there. It's very nice and easy. If you don't want it to automatically tween, you can click this drop down and you can select one of these options. Hold interpolation means it holds, so it doesn't move. There we go, and now it's a little green color. Linear interpolation means it has a tween, but it's not smoothed out. Edit layers with active keyframes, temporarily turns off the keyframe movement, and this allows you to go back and draw and edit your frames if you need to. And then you can just click that button again and it'll turn it off and your keyframes are back. Or you can just click on enable keyframes on this layer again and it'll completely remove those. When you turn it back on, the keyframes will come back. If you want to delete a keyframe, you just select it. There's a delete keyframe button right here and you can get rid of that. All right, so that's the basics of the timeline. We'll jump into actually animating now. Okay, so I'm starting out animating the sketch. So I did a drawing beforehand and just traced over that because I, I was like, oh, I want to animate that. So that's my starting point. Then I'm going through and doing my keyframes, which are your kind of major poses in the animation. So this being a walk cycle, the major poses of a walk cycle that you should keyframe are the contact positions. That's when the legs are furthest apart and one foot contacts the floor and the pass positions, which is where one foot passes the other foot to overtake it, if that makes any sense. So I'm also being mindful of the tail movements here and also the leaf. I do refine this a bit later. Um, objects like that, that have a weight sort of separate from the character, sort of stuff like tails and hair and anything with its own kind of momentum that's sort of animated with um, uh, overlapping action in mind which means it kind of has its own weight. Um, 
and I tend to like to animate that straight ahead. And what that means is not using keyframes, it's just drawing one layer after the other, one frame after the other, sorry. So I'm kind of doing that with the leaf here. I wanted it to have more of a weight there. So I'm kind of exaggerating that a little bit um, in the keys there. And then I go back later in the in-betweens and refine it a little more because my process isn't exactly streamlined. Uh, the more professional way of doing it is to have a timing chart and you can figure out how things are timed kind of going in. And it's handy to do that if you're a, a keyframer and then you're having like a an assistant in between for you. They know exactly what you have in mind. But I work on a very like trial and error kind of way, which probably isn't the best, but oh, hey, I like it. <laughs> Um, yeah, here I'm going through and I'm in betweening my keyframes. So I had those four keyframes before, now I'm an adding a new cell in between each one and then drawing the drawings in between, if that makes sense. Quick little tool I'm going to show you that we're going to use with our cleanup and lines. You can actually use vector layers in CSP. So you just click on new vector layer, draw whatever. So let's say some blades of grass or something. And then if you click Y or this button in the bottom left, you can edit your lines. So if you select the tool in the top right, you can say edit your control points. You can adjust the line width, either narrowing or thickening it. You can redraw the line width, so similar, but you just draw over it instead, changing your pressure. You can pinch, say you want to move that a bit, bloat this out a bit or you can redraw. So say that one's a bit too wiggly. I want to redraw that. So this makes cleanup so much easier. You can just move them around instead of redrawing them and erasing them each time. So now we're onto the lining. Um, using vector layers, as just mentioned, um, I'm able to edit the lines really easy, which makes cleaning up and lining so much nicer because um, I tend to be quite wobbly with my lines. I'm not great at being clean. So it's really handy for me to go back later and kind of adjust where things are looking a bit wobbly, looking a bit shaky. Um, but anyway, I get to that later. At the moment, I'm first lining my keyframes. Um, it's my initial four keyframes that I had, the past contact poses of the walk cycle. I'm cleaning those up first. Um, the blue and green lines that you're seeing are the onion skin. I have that on as well as the sketch, um, just to make sure my sort of clean up frames in between each other are not kind of wobbling around too much, if that makes sense. They're, they're still in between each other and they're still kind of smooth and seamless. Um, you don't have to use the onion skin while you're lining, but I do, just because it helps me keep, keep a little tidier. Uh, but again, with the vectors, it's a little bit easier to edit those later if you if you need to. I also, um, a handy thing with the vectors is that you see on the strap there, the lines are jutting out. You can use the vector eraser to erase those lines where they're overlapping. It has a kind of smart feature um, that makes it easier to clean up the lines as well if you've got lines hanging about that you don't want. So that was really handy. Love me some vectors. Toon Boom has vectors too, but I haven't seen a sort of drawing or illustration program that has them before. Well, except Adobe Illustrator, but that's a bit more design anyway. Um, so I was really impressed when Clip Studio Paint had vectors. I was a bit baffled actually. I only just used them a couple of days ago for the first time and I was like, wow, what have I been doing this whole time? This is definitely gonna make animating so much nicer. And you can use all your textured brushes. Like with Toon Boom, if you're animating vectors, the brush quality, the the textures seem like they look very repeated, like the patterns and the textures look very repeated, but in Clip Studio, they look barely, barely different to the raster or bitmap layers, you know? Like I'm using a textured brush here and it looks exactly the same as if I was using a normal layer. So I was very impressed. <laughs> you can see me kind of editing the leaf lines a bit there. I was kind of pushing them around a bit because my leaf was very wobbly. So I was using those um, those vector tools, the line corrector tools to shift those about. 
doing some refining here. I'm now here using the um, the thickening, so I'm thickening parts of it just to make the line weights nicer, and then later I go back and thin things. So I usually never care about line weight in animation because it takes so much time, but this was really nice and quick, so I was very happy with the vectors. Now we're on to colouring. Um, this is quite a quick one. Um, with Clip Studio Paint it has reference layers, so you can set all of your line layers or cells as reference layers or just the whole folder as a reference layer. And that enables you to fill bucket color on a whole new layer without it like being attached to your lines in any way. So that's what I did here. I set the lines as reference and then with the fill bucket you can select sort of um, refer multiple and then by reference. Um, and that allows you to fill your lines, which is great. It's very nice and quick. Um, I do some little things here. I go back and I sort of add some gradients and textures to the color. I go and paint these on every frame individually. Now, usually I don't do this because it looks very messy and it's quite easy for it to look like it's twitching around, but I actually kind of wanted that effect this time. It kind of looks a bit watercolory and, and quite handmade. So I added quite a lot of textures here, like to the leaf, to the water to the fur, all that stuff. I keep doing the eye over and over again because I keep painting back over it. Um, I had a lot of fun with this, if you couldn't tell. Just having a great old time. That's the nice thing about doing short animations. You can kind of spend the time refining it. Did a little shout at the bottom here and used keyframes to kind of animate that one. So I just had one drawing and I just had it shift around to look like it was moving based on, based on his walking. Now here I had a bit of shading, so here I made a new animation folder and I clipped that, like you make a clipping mask, to the color layers um, so it doesn't go outside of the color. And the video stopped now, but <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. So when you're all done and you want to export your animation, you can go to File, Export Animation, and then either export it as a movie, so that's like an MP4 or an AVI an animated gif which is just that kind of moving image which is very handy for little loops and stuff or an image sequence which is the highest resolution you can kind of export and what that does is that it exports every sort of individual frame of your animation as a image which you then import into an editing program you can choose where to export it to so you can export it to a folder just for it you can give it a name so i can just say like leaf cat or something um, the separator just separates it from the number of frames. That just says how many frames it is. So for example, this would be called leafcat underscore zero zero zero. And choose which kind of image to export it as. I always go for PNG. TIFF is the largest and highest quality you can have, but we don't need anything that huge. You can change how much of the canvas you export, how many frames you export, but if you're happy, you can click OK. And it will give you something like this and it's currently adding the frames because it's exporting them. So then you just have an individual image sequence of your animation. So that's all there is to it. I hope this helped you out. Um, this was actually my first time animating in Clip Studio and I had a really good time. I'm definitely going to use it again. Thank you Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring this. It was really, really nice of you. I'm a really big fan of the program. And it means a lot to me that you support artists out there using it and always listen to feedback. I expect great things out of the future with this program and I highly recommend it. Thank you for watching.